Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be talking about something extremely hard hitting and very important to the world and circumstances going on today. Today we are going to be talking about what it's like being an interracial couple and also what is going on around us. It's not a trend, it's something we should be speaking out against because people are losing their lives because of the racism and the discrimination that's going on in the world. And these, this, this happens for people of colour all over the world, but especially in America. We have the killing of George Floyd. Yes. And we also have the Facebook video of, is it Amy Cooper? The lady in the um, park, in the central park? Awful lady and disgusting even. Um, it's not just George Floyd though, there, there are loads of others that have experienced the same, they just haven't been filmed. Coronavirus has taught us one thing, that we are all the same people and we all suffer as one community. The first question we're going to be uh, answering is, what is like being an interracial couple? On my part, I honestly don't even notice it. When Alex messaged me, like, you know, I we went for a, you know, to a, on a date. <laughs> I quickly found out it didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. And actually, well, I, obviously, <laughs> Alex turned out to be incredible. And just to, just imagine if I was racist, and and I was so closed-minded that I I was too afraid to accept him. I, I could have blocked him. I could have ghosted him or whatever. Um, but just like. I would have missed out on so much. For me, I don't think of it as anything different because I've been in different relationships with people from different race, background, or color. And I think it's fine because you have more things to talk about and you bring too many goodness from different cultures and different backgrounds together that it makes the relationship very interesting and not boring at all because yeah. you have things to learn every day and you just appreciate it should have better and it opens your eyes to seeing the real truth with humans that we are literally exactly the same no difference no matter your skin color or your race so another question that people might be wondering about or some people have actually asked me something very similar to this that would be do you fetishize alex or him being black and you know the stereotypical assets that come with that and no, I don't. All I can say is, it's wrong to do so, and it's really disgusting even, it, whether they're black or some people would may do it to other races. Um, you shouldn't be doing that, and don't listen to people who think it's okay. Have you always dated people from different races and different backgrounds? Yeah, uh, for me again, you're... I, I had met, like, maybe a, a few or a couple uh, other black guys, but, uh, and I'd say maybe, no, yeah, when it comes to black guys, not, very few. I'd met. Well, I have dated people from pretty much everywhere and talking about fetish, I think that that is not the case because I see people as just people. I don't see someone and the first thing I ask is, where are you from? I've dated people from different places. Like my ex was um, Scottish. Um, I've dated Ghanaian people, um, I've dated people, Asians, you know, I really don't discriminate where you're from because that is not the first thing that comes to my mind when I see somebody because I think at the end of the day, we're all humans, we're all the same. Do you think any race is better than the other? No. I, to be honest, when we're talking about like racial uh, superiority here, I actually think in a lot of ways, black folk are, in some ways, <laughs> superior. Their skin, it doesn't crack. It's not just like a, a, a little phrase. It's genuinely, they have amazing skin. Uh, Alex inspires me in a lot of ways, and that comes from his culture and background. background. Yeah. I don't think any race is better than any other race as well, because I think everyone has some unique aspects that comes with your background where you're from and that just makes life even more interesting and that's why i if you was to bring all my friends together 
you see that they are all from different backgrounds because I find that so exciting you know to try and learn something new from people based on what they speak how they say things um, how they do things yeah. their food you know I like I love cooking and I cook stuff from different places like even places that I've never been to so you know I think that is the blessing that we have as humans to have that variety is something yes. we should appreciate and it's something we should explore and enjoy yes okay so another question we have is what do you do to contribute to a non-racist world or an anti-racist world even what do you do well i do very simple things like i live by example and i make sure that i support everyone no matter where they're from i don't discriminate secondly i work with brands that i know are not racism themselves like you see some brands on instagram and they only post models that are from the, uh, that are from one particular race yeah and i usually don't follow any of those people and i don't work with them because if i go to your profile and you you have maybe one black guy randomly that's somewhere, a red flag and only maybe one asian person like after scrolling for two hours i'm like i'm not gonna work with you i, I don't even care i don't want to even support you because obviously you are favoring one race over the other and yes that is simple things like that just yeah. helps me believe that i'm playing my part in supporting what is true like the i people. don't even understand it i really really don't I, I, people must be mad if okay if we're like juggling around with like um, it, it looks here and we're like you don't have to look far to see friggin bloody good-looking black guys uh, <laughs> like it, it's not like okay when I were talking about looks that's not like a big and important thing here this whole topic is much greater than that but these big model pages, you know, that particularly want to post muscular guys and stuff. How, how do they not want more black guys on their pages? They are friggin smoking hot. And honestly, how on earth do you preference that uh, out of your card? Like, no, because preference. Like, no, that's not a preference. You can't say that you don't want to, uh, like... You, but the other thing I don't like is when you see a campaign for an ad for a fashion label or whatever and you just see different people and at the end you just see one black person thrown in there you yes. know, that usually have, it drives me nuts because one thing I'm thinking is that is why I don't have as much jobs that I should be getting as a model because when you apply for jobs they, they just say well we, we have the black person already so no we don't need you anymore yes that should not be what you should be and thinking. That is also like that's literally a visual example of the inequality. Why is it not like obviously you can't always have 50-50 on everything and like I, but I just think it's better that companies get into the habit of actively seeking out more black models or minorities. I'm not yeah, just blacks. You're not we just black. We need Asians, we need Indians, we need everyone. You know it should be equal yeah, like or just mix we won't be speaking Thank about you. it if it wasn't a problem because people would be like oh you're picking too much on little things but no we are not picking too much on little things we're just saying that if it wasn't a problem we wouldn't be talking about it because we i work in the model industry and i know how models black models suffer and struggle to get jobs i see a lot of jobs out there and you just see the campaign with only one black person or one Asian person and that is it. That is what we are talking about, you know, you do not need to go out of your way to make sure that you you just represented that uh, minority just because yeah. you want to tick a box. That's be fair, that's be equal. Everyone should have an equal chance. But like, it's just that very surface level kind of action to sort of it, it, it's the fact that they're just trying to tick a box to make themselves look good. That's what a lot of companies do, and that's also what a lot of modeling agencies will do, for, in this case, to not look racist. That's not the goal here. 
it's not to not look racist. It's to, you need to actually be inclusive fully. Like the next yeah. question we want to speak about is mainly directed to me, and he's saying, "How does it feel like being black and gay?" Mm -hmm. Well, being black. I enjoy being black. I am proud of my skin color. I'm proud of where I'm from. I'm proud of my heritage. That is that. There's nothing more to say about that. Yeah. Being gay, that is something that I had to struggle with because obviously, you know, it took me my lifetime to accept my sexuality. I know a lot of people would blame it on media or something else to say, oh, the media is pushing an agenda I knew I was gay even before I knew what was gay porn okay so I actively went out to search and find gay content I now accept myself for who I am and I'm happy I've never been this happy and I feel like the whole weight on my shoulders has been dropped because I'm living my true self and I'm happy I'm proud to be who I am and I'm proud to be in a fantastic relationship with someone that you know means everything to me so life is good this is a question that a, a friend of mine asked me and he was like in the lgbt community do you think people use preference to cover up racism yes i think so and even if like it might not be conscious always but i definitely think it's a it's a it's a case of sort of unconscious racism when it comes to adding these preferences like sure you can have like a, a, a different preference and preferences in some ways but when it comes some, down to something as basic as skin color like that's that's literally all we're talking about here and obviously there are cultures tied in with it a little bit but how well, I think preference can be used to cover racism as well. Because if you yeah. say, oh, um, I'm only into white people, I'm not into blacks or anyone, then the question you should be asking yourself is why? Is it because of what you, you've been taught while growing up? Or is it because of something specific? Is it because of an experience you've had with one person that is of a different skin color? If you answer those questions and you still feel that genuinely it's just a preference, then fine, be it just a preference. But most times you find out that it's not just an innocent preference matter. It's more more than that. And also, I would say, if you if you have this kind of perceived idea that you do have a natural preference. Why not go against it and actually and explore? Yeah, yeah, and try something new. Like, well, yeah. Why not just try? What message do you have for young ones growing up and for people out there? What message? Um, just have an open mind and really fall back and see from a distance what's actually going on, and just just think about this. George Floyd and many others, they were and they are real people, human beings. That man was taken down to the ground in handcuffs on the street by four police officers. And one of them had his knee on his neck until he could not breathe and then until he was dead. That is an extremely, that's, that's brutal, that's torture. And for a human being to be able to stand there with people watching him, calm, calmly just bringing it on, as that man like begs for his life and, and cries out to his mum. That is, that is not like, at what stage do people get that level of twisted confidence to do something like that? You shouldn't be doing anywhere near that towards other human beings. You might be angry about, about uh, towards someone, but th this is a police officer who was supposed to be protecting society. 
and the same evil is with that um, Amy Cooper. She she was a white woman who wasn't being attacked, but she changed the tone of her voice uh, when she was calling the police to to make it sound as if she was being attacked. The, the guy was several meters away uh, filming it. He was calmly just telling her, uh, her to like sure call the police, but she was describing him as an African American man, specifically because she knew what power it had and. We have to really look at this situation and if you cannot see it by the end of this video how serious this topic is you need to look at yourself and you need to really think but yeah well i think it's time for true change and political freedom is not the same as real freedom we need to be treated equally I know I've seen a lot of people saying black lives matter sound, sounds like saying, you know, black people want to have preferential treatment. That is not what that means. It means that black lives also matters. That is what we're saying. We need everyone to be treated equally, no matter your race, no matter your skin color, no matter your sexuality, everyone should be treated equally. We all take in the same oxygen. We all go to bed at night. We all are scared of coronavirus, no matter what religion, where you're from. So why should we think that one person is superior just simply because of their skin color or where they're from? Everyone should be equal, treated equally. Every life matters, every life is precious. And everyone deserves the freedom to live their life to the fullest like with opportunities and anything that is out there everyone should be having that freedom and equal right you know to go out and get what they want and live their lives and I think that is all what we are asking for that equality not preference not being superior just that equality just another quick little point is if you go around using the hashtag all lives matter although I don't like the word that's problematic because when you go out and use that hashtag it's speaking against what this movement is actually about which is equal opportunity equal treatment and fairness across all diversity of human life now that's the end of the video but it's important that you Try to like and share this if you can because this will most likely be going out to people who already agree with us and already have that mindset. So if this video does well, it can possibly get to people who don't have that mindset. So support it for the good reasons there are that other people might get educated and will possibly help to join this um, and speak out speak out as much as you can and donate and sign petitions because every voice does matter and it needs to be heard thank you guys for watching we'll be back to our usual schedules after posting this video and we'll see you guys next time